B. Jackson Select Board will hold a public hearing at the Jackson Town Office on Tuesday, January 9th, 2024 at 330 to accept and designate a specific purpose for the use of the following unanticipated revenue. $12,112.33 from the state of New Hampshire to the town of Jackson. This is a special one-time bridge payment in accordance with House Bill number two. So I think we should use this for the Valley Cross Bridge. <laughs> Any arguments? No. <laughs> we do, actually, we do have um, two options. We could use it for the Valley Cross or the Maloon Road Bridge. Um, that's our Well, those are two good bridges to be yeah, looking at. Yeah. Um, do we have any money for the Maloon? How much, what, what kind of damage are we looking at the Maloon Bridge? Um, we from this past storm, it's not really a lot of damage. Uh, we need to let the water recede some more so we can really have the state inspect it. On um, the far side, there was some erosion, but not a huge amount. Do you have any other information about this special one-time bridge payment in accordance with House Bill 2? Was it a refund for what they did in our town, or is this one in general? One not related at all to the quarterly block grant aid payments that a municipality received can only be used on maintenance, construction, or reconstruction. But it's basically... Um, Not due to any overpayment no. or anything like that? 50% of the distribution is based on your municipality's yeah. percentage of statewide municipal bridge debt for surface area and remaining 50% of the distribution is based on us. municipality's percentage of statewide population. Well, for municipally owned bridges, so mm -hmm. I, I would say seek the road aiding agent's guidance on that and uh, use it accordingly. Mm -hmm. um, do we do we have to know which bridge we're going to use it, or do we have to I, accept the funds? I just accept the funds. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, but it has to be a municipal bridge. Okay. And let's either the Maloon or the okay. Valley Crossroad bridges are both municipal bridges, so. Um, I'll make a motion to accept the $12,112.33 from the state of New Hampshire. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 12,000, Gary. Okay, great. But it's a great use. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, I wouldn't visit the bridge tomorrow to see if any of the water is going to go All right. We are on to our regular meeting. Did anyone have any comments or thoughts on that? <clears throat> Good, thank you. All right, the first is the approval of minutes from the December 19th regular meeting. Any questions, comments, changes? Nope. All right, motion to approve the December 19th minutes. Well, I'll make that motion to approve the December 19th, 2023 regular minutes of the select one. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There you go, sir. And then the second is um, the second is a non-public we had according to RSA 91-A colon 32A, and this was a non-public that we had to decide on whether or not the minutes, um, sorry, whether or not how much we were going to include <laughs> in the budget. Let me get this one right for our um, our increases. Normally we put in either a 3.2% COLA or we put in um, an allocated amount that we feel is fair to at least get the budget started. So we decided on a 4% um, raise, a flat across the board raise in the budgets for presentation and discussion. 
and that falls between a 3.2% COLA and a 5.2% military um, what they're eating for their adjustments. So we figured 4% would be a good place to, to start with our budgets, and that was a decision we made. So do you guys have any um, changes or questions on these minutes? No, I do not. Motion to approve the non-public session on December 19th. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Oh, sorry, I'll sorry. second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And move on to place to sign these, so I'm just going to put it on. And then we also had a second non-public session according to RSA 91-A colon 32C and that is a meeting that we are going to keep the minutes sealed for. Any questions on that? Or good. All right. A motion to keep these minutes sealed. So moved. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> and if you would sign on the seal there. Because this next year we are going to be going through our reevaluation. Um, so, Jason, did you have any comments that you wanted to just make sure. ahead of time? Know. Yes, yeah. thank you. If I approach the bench, I'll give that. Does it, did, <laughs> it, did anybody hear about Conway's? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Thanks, Jason. And so. Jason Paul has been our assessor for how many years now? Oh, Before I think my, my dad and I. My dad worked here back in the 70s and 80, early 80s, I think, before the 80s boom, but he worked for um, the state of New Hampshire DRA because they had their own appraisers, mm -hmm. and then um, then he went on his own, and we've been working here, I think, straight since 1994. And that's one of the benefits mm -hmm. is that Jason oh, knows our property and our town very well, is familiar with our our culture and our, um, our not just our buildings, but the way our town sort of operates. So, um, take it away. Yeah, um, and I'll try to speak up so everyone can hear. Yeah, this is um, this the the state mandates the towns revalue at least every five years. Um, this is our our fifth year, so we have to do something with our assessments, um, and. Revaluing means bringing the assessments to market value. Um, and everybody knows the market's really taken a dramatic increase in the last five years, um, especially since COVID, basically. And um, again, you've read it in the paper about Conway. Um, their, their assessments, I think, on average, <coughs> double uh, for the most part. But, um, and, one of the one of the things that we do and every town does every year is comparing the sales prices versus their assessments to see where we are um, and i was looking at the trend of ours and in 2019 when we revalued we were at 98 to 100 percent and then it obviously slowly slowly decreases the ratio decreases as the market increases um, because our, our assessments stay the same and the market values go up. So in, in 2019, we were at almost 100%. In 20, we went down to 93%. 21, we took the big jump down to 76% and 61% last year. For um, 23, we've only done it preliminarily because um, the, we do it with the state. They give us the official assessment ratio, which is also called the equalization ratio. Um, and preliminarily, that's at about 58%. Um, and the sales since that preliminary study shows that it's even lower than that. So 
we may well be approaching 50%, and thus our values might completely double, or more or less, or on average double here. Now, of course, assessments, all I do is try to make the playing field fair to do one part of the math equation. And um, a lot of my job when I go around, people say, oh, you're here to just make the town more money. It's like, no, I don't, I don't care. It's up to you guys to vote at town meeting, town, school, county meetings. The budget is what decides what you people are going to be paying for taxes. I just, I'm responsible for the assessments and trying to keep that fair and equitable. So, um, what, what we've been doing, you know, over the past, well, gosh, we've been doing it for over 10 years, I think, is we're kind of what we call cyclical revaluation of going around and looking at a certain number of properties each year um, to just keep up with the data. You know, in, in the old days, the ta towns would hire a crew to come in, whether it was a state, but now they don't anymore, but private companies will come in with a crew of maybe five to 10 people. They'll be here for a few months. They're in and out like a, like a flash. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. My company is basically just me right now. And um, so we, we kind of keep <coughs> up with things on a cyclical basis. You know, we, we, we look at the building tournaments. I work with Kevin um, and, and the town office quite a bit. Um, just so we have good communication, so we know the town, know the people, know what's going on. So we're not, so we're all on the same page for, with a lot of properties. Um, just maintaining a quality, a quality system, and that type of quality shows up in ways that you don't see. Because in like ratio studies, one of the things is checking a disparity. You know, we come up with an average central tendency, which is the mean, median, average, those things, but there's also coefficient of, coefficient of deviation, which, like if you had three sales, one sale was at 100%, one was at 150%, and another was at 50. Well, on average, you were at 100%, but your other two sales were quite a ways off, so your deviation is off. But our town, you know, because of the work that we've been doing with the town office, with Kevin, with everybody, um, our deviation is, is good. Keeping up with things pays off in the long run. And it also pays off with, I think, the number of, you know, complaints we have, the number of appeals we have is not really great here. And um, I can't even think the last time we had to go to Concord or to court for anything. But, I, you know, I mean, toot my own horn a little bit, but um, so just to just to warn you, you know, assess, assessments will go up, you know, I guarantee it, and um, that gets people riled up. You know, Conway when when they revalued this year, I think they got the word out early, which is good and bad because they got the word out and then people take their new assessment multiply it by the old tax rate and say oh my god mm -hmm. so, so they didn't wait till the tax the new tax rate came out so um i that, think i think that's one of the important things that we touched on very briefly before this meeting is that it's a snapshot certainly the assessment of your property is a huge part of it but the tax rate is the other component component that will apply to this so all we're doing right now today is giving a little bit of a, a, a very high level overview of, of what Jason does, but introducing the fact now and making sure that people are prepared that this is our reevaluation year and it's probably going to be very significant, more significant than we've seen yeah. in quite a lifetime, so, uh, or quite a long time, but mm -hmm. well, it could be a lifetime too. <laughs> um, cool so, uh, you know, look at your tax bills, look at your assessments, make sure that if you have questions, <coughs> you have to, you know, bring it to our office and we can get a hold of Jason or whatever, but yeah. um, just keep the communications yeah. open, like you said, I think that's the most yeah. important thing. We'll, I'll be putting, I'm sorry, if I'm Go ahead. Yeah, we'll be putting, I always put something in the town report, pretty much every year, but this year, we'll, we make it a little stronger, saying we'll be out in force this year. Here's what's gonna happen in, our, in, in the town report. 
We usually send out something a couple of times a year on your e-news so that, mm -hmm. hey, Jason's out there. Um, the police always have my vehicle. I was going to say, stuff. you do yep. need to let them on your property. <laughs> I mean, it's, I'm just yeah. it's um, you know, I get, I get caught on people's cameras all the time now, which is fine. <laughs> I mean, but it's, it's a little more sensitive than it, than it used to be, it right. seems. But, um, yeah, it's getting the word out that I'll be out there. Um, <laughs> Especially this year, I'll be looking, you know, more in depth at the sale properties at first, because that's what the focus is: is the sale properties to make sure our, to reset our tables and things mm -hmm. to bring things to market value. Um, but yeah, I'll be out there looking at permits and looking at sales, and um, we'll be around. But communication is is always important, and um, hopefully, it will go swimmingly. Good luck with that. Just kidding. Uh, yeah. Thank you for no. Thank you really for what you do and for being here today to kind of prepare us. I guess. But yeah. Any questions? Still will you file a note for me? I will. I will. I, I stopped there on the way down. Questions, comments? No. I, well, the comment is that, as Jason said, this doesn't have anything to do with someone's tax bill actually increasing. Mm -hmm. That the the budget does. Mm -hmm. In a perfect world, without a big deviation we'd all pay the same amount if the budget was flat. Right. So that's where budget management comes in. Yeah. Yeah. Jason, the old adage used to be a third down, a third up, a third the same. Is yeah. that still in effect? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, but like I said, our numbers have been really good. You know, our deviation isn't significant. If the state was here, they say, well, the only thing that really wrong with our ratio study is that we're at 58 percent of market value so but it's a lot more sophisticated than just multiplying by 1.75 to get back to 100 percent you know you have to do the work to make sure because there's always a little deviations <coughs> in neighborhoods in classes of property I look at vacant land versus improved land. I look at commercial, uh, and that was a big thing in Conway. The commercials increase or decrease at different rates than residential, and that's a big component of what's going on down there. I look at you know condos versus other things, different complexes versus um, versus others. Um, but um, you know, there's a, there's a lot to it. But um, I, I, we've got a good system and, and maintaining it. It's it's, um, it's working. All right. Thank you very much. We'll yep. see you around. Yeah, I'll be around. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. All right. Next, we have um, to accept two generous donations that we received for the Jackson Police Department. One is for one hundred dollars, and one is for five hundred dollars. So do I need to read? Either from or no? So we just need to make a motion to receive these donations. I'll make that motion that we receive those donations uh, targeting the Jackson Police Department. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You had your name on, Chief. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> All right. The, so we appreciate it. Uh, yes. They're very we generous. And uh, yeah. we. Uh, we're very grateful that they think, think enough of us to do that. All right. Emily cannot be here today. She is our emergency management director, but we do have her hazard mitigation plan ready to be signed. So um, she's put a lot of good time into this, and especially over the last month or so, we've been really thrilled to have her on board. So um, I will make a motion to sign the hazard mitigation plan update. <coughs> I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I think this looks like one signature tool on this yeah. one. Okay. She's probably resting up for what she's doing. She's actually in another meeting. <laughs> and um, just, I don't think we have anything on the agenda specifically, but um, I just want to give kudos to all of our town employees for the paperwork and 
organization skills that they've used to put together everything that we had to get together for the um, FEMA and Homeland Security for submitting expenses. So hopefully we can get some reimbursement from the last storm on December 17th and 18th. Gary, Jay, you guys, we sat here for a couple hours yesterday and put together everything and it was really spot top notch, so thank you for that. Really appreciate it. I love me a good spreadsheet. <laughs> You're pretty impressive. <laughs> All right. We have the Thornhill Ice Flow. And um, Gary and Tim, um, you are the property owner. So obviously, if anyone's been on Thornhill Road, there's a patch up at the top as you go that where the ice flows across the road. So currently, it's been taken care of a little bit as far as putting sand on it and getting and salt. And salt. Scraping. Um, <laughs> I mean, with the storm that we've had this year, I'm Gary Allen. Oh, sorry. Yeah, right. Yeah. Nice um, to see you. Um, you know, we, we seem to be getting more and more rain with our storms now. Um, yep. And that adds to the flow coming off the driveway. Um, and it's making a very um, hazardous condition on that road up the hill. And that's kind of leaving the town in a, a liable position because we are aware of the danger of it. And, uh, you know, could we let it persist? And they could come back and help. Yep. Um, so I'm willing to work with you and start with, you know, as minimal as we can to correct it and take it from there. Um, I guess my first proposal is we could, um, if we could, I brought down what our criteria is now for our driveway permits. And if we could go with what we have now. Um, and any new new driveways, I think that would probably alleviate the problem. Um, I mean, I can talk to you after the you know, it's from the road edge, you need to pitch away from the road. Now all your driveways pitch right straight through the road. So at the very entrances, we need, need to make some difference in the grades. And I think that would do it. I mean, before we go and go, have to go through the expense center, you put in culverts and us put in ditch down across the property. <clears throat> okay, uh, I'd be happy to discuss this with you, yeah. um, whatever, just so we correct the misconception here. It is not a water flow from the driveway. Mm -hmm. There is a small lateral spring right on the corner of, I'm sorry, right on the edge of Thornhill Road, which seeps or weeps water, however you wanted to describe it, uh, but it is not flow from the driveway. Mm -hmm. The flow that comes down the driveway is uh, is properly handled, it's channeled, and it goes down into the culvert that's above the driveway. Mm -hmm. The problem with this little weeping uh, spring is uh, it's below that level. Uh, it's right literally on the edge of the pavement. Mm -hmm. um, and the way Thornhill Road's constructed, uh, it, there's, no real, there's not much of a crown in it, right. so the water, it doesn't <coughs> go to the side, it gradually works its way out and, and actually eventually over to the other side. And um, that's um, further exacerbated when the ice builds up, keeps pushing the water mm -hmm. over. Uh, so at any rate, if the driveway was not there, you would still have the same issue. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think I think the main the main point of today's meeting was to get you two together and introduced yeah, and not uh, solve this right at the meeting because obviously there's some discovery to be made by both of you and see what it is. So that being said, you know we can keep it as a pending item or Gary you yeah. can just update us or whatever. But yeah, I'm hoping that you guys can just work together and figure out what the remedy is to make sure that it's safe. Yeah, this is the same issue that. Um, Kevin Bennett came and saw me about last summer. Mm -hmm. So it's the same, same thing. Yeah. Okay. Great. So I'll leave out. you boys to take you care of it. Yeah. And Come up with yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> we should have done a couple of days ago before we get yeah, out. Yeah. Right. Well, it is what it is. I do have pictures and videos, though, if anyone has any questions about <laughs> where the water is emanating from. I'm sure, yeah, that'll help with both. I did that. I took those on Friday and Saturday before it. the snow. Good. Okay.
So. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate you coming to the meeting, yeah, too, just to no worries. Hey, I'm the there. one who's most impacted by this. Yeah. My driveway's right below that, yeah. and, yeah. I, and I have had <laughs> visibility pulling out, Oof. and it's just yeah. worse with ice and the yeah. car can't s stop. It's, right. you know, so, injuries, yeah, so. I'd love to see it fixed. I, I'm just okay. not quite sure how to do it. Okay. okay. Burr? Um, just, I guess someone related to the No. 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 Uh, it's a home above oh. that. Sorry. Yeah, that's for Phillips. He's our civil engineer for the town. Just okay. that's why he was picking up. So, all right. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it, and we'll <clears throat> you just keep us updated on that one. Any comments? Okay. Awesome. All right. Uh, the next one is our J Jackson Falls temporary trail closure. Um, ben Halcyon is normally the Conservation Commission rep. Kev, uh, Ken Kimball is here today. And, yeah. Yeah, basically, with the storm that we had in December, all of the uh, work that the Conservation Commission had done about laying out sawdust and so forth to protect the tree roots is pretty much down in the Atlantic Ocean right, right. now, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so we we close the trail off for the simple reason is that we get a lot more traffic on the root system there. Those trees are already stressed. It was the purpose of the the, the wood chips being put down. Um, we did work with Emily in putting in a FEMA request to replace those. Mm -hmm. I, I should note that the Conservation Commission have gotten those wood chips for free, and then the Conservation Commission members have volunteered to go out and put the time. But that usually happens over a number of weeks to a month, depending on who's got the time to move in. Yes. It's going to be a problem when we get to the spring, because we'll start to see high use in that area again. So when we put in the FEMA, we basically put in that have a contractor come in and do that. Right. If we don't get the FEMA funding, we will need to address that issue, because if it's just volunteer time, it could really prolong the time mm -hmm. for which the, uh, the trail closure will be necessary. The second thing I should point out that was not in the FEMA request is not only did we lose the wood chips, but there was a, quite a bit of severe erosion up against, just as the river was coming through on the bank. It's something that's been there, except it was really accelerated from the storm. Mm -hmm. We're going to need to look at, and it's probably not going to be an inexpensive solution to start to remedy that, or we're going to lose the trees there. Right, and I think with the, um, the FEMA, there's three stages of it basically there's what this what damage did we have to cover for the storm day and then what did we have to do to rebuild some areas immediately and then what are our temporary or those were our temporary fixes and then what are the permanent fixes we need to do down the road and those are the to be determined costs so as those right and the commission you know, has spent a little bit of time i spent some time looking at really this sort of two future options because this is not going to be uncommon right. anymore in the future it's either to harden that trail, which would be quite expensive, mm -hmm. or just just realize that every year or two we're going to need to pay. And the wood chips do deteriorate over time, so right. it is something that's necessary. The commission is not ready to come back and offer a solution at this point, but right. uh, you should be prepared that there's sort of two issues. One is just how do we harden that trail, or build into our budget the need to replenish periodically because these storms are going to happen. Mm -hmm. And then the second is just the erosion, which is part of the fire more expensive. Okay. And then using the, um, the Gary. Gary. Uh, sorry. Using the um, estimates that Emily had for replacing them, we can sort of gauge what we might be looking at down the road? Yes, that's correct. Okay. I mean, that is essentially going back and replacing not relying on free chips and volunteers. And volunteers. Questions? No, I have none. Um, and if I'm correct, they don't plow the parking lot in the winter. Correct. Which is good because yeah. that really will reduce the pressure there. Right. And but I see you do have the tape up already, yeah. so good. It's the springtime that's going to be the issue real quick. Yeah. You mean like tonight and tomorrow? <laughs> the weather that's coming in? Put a cereal in the rocks, would you? I want to know how the blueberries make it. <laughs> Actually, that's a very well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Great. That's cool. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Ken. Um, good luck. <laughs> hope, it, uh, hope it survives the divorce today. All right. Um, annual review of, an of our investment policy. This is um, sort of a copy and paste from what we have had in place in the past. And Julie sent this ahead for a review. Do you have any questions or comments or changes? No, I don't. No. I 
will make a motion then to approve our investment policy uh, for the coming year. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> The next is Bob, a warrant article bond discussion for fire station engineer study and highway shed roof. Well, <clears throat> I can't speak to the highway shed roof, but the fire station engineering study, uh, we, at our last meeting, we all went out and looked at the, the possibility of that site uh, between the end of this building where the um, police department is and the current fire station so it would be just on this side of that access road <clears throat> and there's and I, and I asked her to come tonight because if there are questions technical questions and I know Frank you posed a general technical question between meetings and I felt like Number one, I'm not going to give the answer. No, I didn't think you could. But, but, but the engineer. That it would be it would behoove us to have Burr here to address that mm -hmm. issue. It's a basic. It, 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 it's going to be easy enough for him to explain. Um, so I met with <coughs> Mike Couture, the architect for the highway department building that we built, and Burr, and they both worked together on that building. And that was a design and build concept. And um, we met with Jay and I don't know, for an hour, 90 minutes or something, went over uh, a site-specific layout. We want to make sure that um, it's something, once we get into the site work, is still affordable. And it's also something that is of critical importance, that it, it remains that efficient and effective design for today's firefighting and emergency and first responder services that we're, we're trying to have available in the town. So um, I think Burr can speak to, and, and then so we wanted to make sure, number one, that we had a good idea what we needed for a bond, and I think we do, and number two, we wanted to make sure that the initial assessment and need identification work that was going to be important to do between now and town meeting was something that we were going to have the bandwidth to do, primarily um, Burr and, uh, and the architect are going to obviously have some billable hours for mm -hmm. us to be able to go in with a site-specific uh, design. And by site-specific, if you... <coughs> most of us are familiar with that area on the town campus, it's not a flat area like the parking lot we were looking at now. So we're going to have to go into that hill. It's not going to have a back area that we're going to be able to pull rolling equipment out of. And, and so it, it's not like we can just take what we have and put it there. It's got to be able to be addressed for that specific site. So. Um, and and Burr, is it? What would you like to add to that discussion? I know you and I talked one time. That general question about well, if if there's issues with diesel in that swampy area that we where we were pumping diesel fuel for decades, why wouldn't there be in this in this site? Was that one question that came up? And you've got a really quick straightforward answer with that that incurred it, that also includes the fact that water flows downhill, not uphill. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Is that the, the existing fire station is in the bottom of the gully. So if you look upstream of the fire station, you'll see a, a gully coming down pretty much right through the fire station. If you go across the road, there's another gully where the water uh, you know exits out to the river. So the fire station is basically in that old fuel tank or basically right in that gully, whereas the, this alternate site is now uphill and away from it. So it is pretty much a water down, water flows downhill situation there. We'll probably do a test kit and take a look at things as part of this process because we haven't done much look, you know, we just looked up at the ground surface so far right now. So there's a certain amount we don't know what we're yet, but, but the site looks, you know, other than the X 
excavation component looks, you know, looks decent. You know, it's pretty good. And I think as Bob said, there's, there's really three sites: the existing fire station site, the one over the left of us, or over you know, next to the library. That's clearly from a earthwork perspective the site, but that seems to be not a palatable site for the community. So this is the next best site is is that one. Did you have a question for Berlin? No, um, you know, I think part of it was answered about, you know, why is a site so close, adjacent to the site that we have any better than where we were right. and you're talking about the way the water's going. Um, my question though is, can it be, the site that we have now, the one that our, our forefathers 75 years ago decided was a good place to go, can that be engineered to work in the site that we're in right now? We decided sort of that with the previous, uh, I think it was the previous iteration with Sam and Leah, the, the architects, and I think we came up with something like 900000 or more of earthwork costs because of, mostly because of that range there. So you, you, it's not just the fuel tanks, one part, and actually wasn't even weighed in there, the fuel tank. But that was just due to it being in the wetlands and just being saturated soil. So it could even require a whole bunch of drainage. The majority of that was for the road to access the highway department. Right. But you still want to look at the ground and see what we actually have there. That's yet to come. Yeah, I'm not quite so worried about it because there is an excavated slope on to the right. You know, you go to public works for our driveway, to the right, there's an excavated slope there, and you're down into the native soil by whatever, eight feet, something along those lines. So we're already down to the soil on the right side of the driveway, so I'm not quite so concerned about it. But we don't know exactly where we're looking around. You did mention there were some test pits when that service road went back to the highway department. I think you, you were thinking there were a couple of uh, test pits on when that road was constructed, or did I get that wrong? I'm not sure. I don't, I don't remember that. I don't know all that. But no. Okay. I don't think there, was, there wasn't any test pits down the wall. I mean, Jay put in a uh, catch basin right at the base of the floor. Right yeah, that wasn't the super deep, though. Um, it's the it's pits, and I'm just thinking. part of your answer your question, Frank. Back in 1947, <coughs> when they picked that site, the majority of that site is basically swampland, wetlands, nasty digging. That's when we put the power line in to the generator a month ago. I had Bert come up and look at the the digging, and it was pretty blatant that. Behind the existing fire station is just all swamp land that got filled in over the years. Mm -hmm. It was a little tiny tract of land in 1947 that they built the original structure on, and everything behind it is just wetlands. The minute you come onto Gray's Inn property before the town owned it, is where everything goes up and got gravel versus swamp. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention. I thought you were talking about a Warren article and not a bond. You keep saying bond. Yes, no, we are talking about Warren article. Okay. It says Warren so article our slash yeah, that's our bond. Because you kept saying yeah. bond, so it's two gigantic yeah. things. Well, that's I, what the agenda says. Yeah. But. but I think what our our thought is, if in correct me if I'm wrong, if you were going to go in this direction, we were originally thinking Warren article uh, bond. Right now we're thinking Warren article to get money to do the study to find out which site works the best for the fire station and it may be that we're looking at three different sites still to rule all of them out because if you start doing this site you know to the left of this building and left or right wherever you're sitting between the current station and the town building if you look at that and it ends up not being a viable site then do you relook at the current station and look if that's a viable site and how much the excavation would be and if that's not feasible or you compare that again to the to the um, old tennis courts parking lot area you know I think we have to be prepared to look at all options and I think as it's been said in the past making sure that the due diligence is done to eliminate all possible um, options and pick the best one that works mm -hmm. for the town, for the community, like you said, and um, and it may also involve restructuring the fire station compared to what it looks like in the drawings that we have today. It may be a more compact station with two floors versus a spread out fire station. So moving towards a warrant article for two hundred to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, depending on what number we decide on is more reasonable 
that also would come off the price of a bond or the cost of a bond in the future because you would have to do this construction and engineering study anyway. So if you were going to have a $5 million bond down the road for all these projects, it would be four point <coughs> four and three quarters because you would be spending 200 plus now. Um, so that's our thought. Did I get that right? Yeah. Well, I would say that the warrant for the, uh, the engineering and design study is going to be for the specific site that we haven't taken a look at. We, we, we know what's down on that side of the library. Mm -hmm. We know what's on the site where the current station stands. And what we're going to learn by putting that kind of money out there for a warrant article is how we could put a new construction onto that site that we're describing. Because we don't have that. And that's where the work that Burr and Mike put in to that site this winter is going to, going to clarify that and shed some light on that. I, I mean, yeah, that, that's the idea, is to research and study every possible location for a new site or for a renovation <coughs> of the existing site. And that's what's been done over the last five years, mm -hmm. except for that site. There was discussion about that site at, at one point, um, in, in, I think, in the past, but it had everything kind of coming out onto the service road, where this will have everything uh, in coming out in the same direction as, as the current station onto, onto the road. So that's that's what we, we need to that's what we need to clarify mm -hmm. and get specific on. Or what did I miss? What did I miss? Uh, I think you got most of it. I, I would just say that site. There are some perks to the site, and one is if we go to two floor option, which seems like that's that's how it, how it would work out. But we at least a portion of the building will be two floor. That second floor comes out and is the same level as the town yes. office and the library and ever. So it kind of makes a real. Uh, a comprehensive, consistent plan that all, that all goes together on, on the back side of it. Um, I, again, we, we've already, I think, beat to death the existing fire station site of the analysis with Sam Gilly and the other stuff. The site over here, we could mostly, because it's so flat, we could mostly just take that building for a plan and apply to this one mm -hmm. and just update costs. So that wasn't so hard, but that, that seemed like a non starter from a community improvement. You know, community didn't seem to want that site. So this seems like the next best one, and there are some advantages to it as well. And so, and on that second floor, obviously the rolling equipment is is down on the first floor and never never comes up here. That second floor is where we've got uh, a, a training room. Help me, Jay. What else did we have up on that? Um, uh, it's it's just just training area, meeting room, room. Um, and a couple of miscellaneous spaces that are kind of. Archives and office or whatever. Because it's the, the best way to explain the ground floor is day to day operation. Right. You know, right. sheets office. Dispatch. Dispatch. Dump. Decon. Safety. Fire trucks. Yeah. There's not, we can't get away from having the decontamination room on the same uh, level as the rolling equipment and the gear room. Mm -hmm. That's not practical. Uh, so that would all be on that bottom the, level. The nice part with what the four of us kind of come up with over here was it's two level, but it's, I call it split level. Mm -hmm. So you don't have this gigantic skyscraper two level building out front. You've got your basic ground floor, kind of like the same in the picture. Mm -hmm. And then at the rear, which kind of access, right, you can access right from here, it's set back. So it, I think it takes away any kind of a height issue at all. Um, it spreads it out over that area over there. So our decision, I guess, is that we're not going to have a bond hearing. We're not going to need a bond this year then. But we will be putting a warrant article together for a site study. And the amount would be? $250,000, mm -hmm. which, is, which is a year one of the bond payment when right. we looked into that bond. So. And the, the advantage of doing the site study now 
for the one <coughs> possible remaining place for us to be able to find uh, a way to provide our first responders with adequate uh, building to operate out of is that um, we would end up um, being able to back that out of the overall cost of the station there. Because that's, you know, the engineering site development um, line item was uh, 200000 just for the renovation, and it was $150,000 down there because it was so flat, it would be a little bit more money, but that's what we'll end up with. And just to address your um, thoughts on this, this would also give the public a year from now a good mm -hmm. decision on whether or not they want renovation or new fire station and it'll yeah, give them yeah. a lot better information yeah. on whether or not that choice is, is mm -hmm. you know what they want and that was also why I, I felt like well the last thing we want to be talking about is is a bond this year mm -hmm. we know we're going to be circling back around for a bond next year because right. we don't want to get bond happy or yeah. your hand go up or? yeah yeah no, i was just going to add to that that this approach is actually to design that site so that right. if we go to 2025 <coughs> town meeting, the number will be really good. The estimate will be a really good number. And if the voters vote to move forward with it, we can start to start from that year. We don't have to start design that phase and then do yeah. another year. So Essentially shovel ready. ready. Yeah. Accurate, what Bert is saying is an accurate, we can get an accurate estimate. Right. Um, and then, um, I was going to make a point and I forgot it. Okay. Could I ask yes. just an innocent question, Amber? If we would have stayed within the footprint of the building that we have and reorganized the space in that, okay, how much of an engineering cost is, would that leave us with in terms of what's around the building that is already there in the footprint that it's in? Well, uh, you're going to stay in the footprint of the existing building? Yes. Well, then I guess it's up to the town what they want to do behind the building. I don't know. You leave it the way it is and put up with the way it is, I guess. I don't, I'm not, I'm not, well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not totally following that. You're not changing the outside of the no. site. No, no, staying within the footprint and using the space that we have within the footprint of the building that we have. Changing things upstairs, maybe changing things in one of the bays downstairs, and reorganize within the footprint that we have. And I'm just asking yeah. a question. I'm not uh, advocating anything just at this point. Yeah, no, I, I, I just don't think there's going to be... If you're not doing anything outside the building, there's going to be no cost outside the building. It'll be just what you do for everybody in the building. You can, you can make it even be that's all. Okay. So, Bert, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Bert's specialty is civil engineer, so yeah. it's outside stuff. <laughs> right. Compared to inside no, the building. I understand that, but I just wanted to get that. My, my two cents on that, and you probably already know it, is, yes. is the, the biggest <coughs> inefficiencies we have is lack of some extra space. Nice. So to try to fix the existing building and the existing footprint doesn't fix enough of the inefficiencies. Okay. Um, and our task then is to see if we can absorb a two hundred fifty thousand dollar work article and work on our budgeting. So that's our task, our homework. Um, do we need to make a motion on this for a warrant article, or will that be in our budget meetings and It'll hearings? Be in the budget meetings. Okay. So we need to put the wording together for a two hundred fifty thousand dollar warrant article. And then what about the salt check? Yeah. We're going to do yeah. do one for that as well. Yeah. All right. Anything else? No, I think we covered what we came in uh, to report. Just the only yeah, no, I you know two fifty for that and two ninety for the salt chip. So we're looking at five hundred and forty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. All right, um, for the Dundee Community Forest MOA, we don't have any update on that yet, so we can move right along. We do not have any short-term rental um, applications, so we don't have to worry about that. And Julie did send out the letters for people to report if they had um, the 30 rental limit, so she's working on gathering that information. 
Kevin, any comments on the two building permits that we have? Uh, no. Awesome. Awesome. Um, any public comments? Linda? Yes, I, I would like to report that uh, at this point in time, the library trustees don't have any particular concerns or questions about the newly proposed site for uh, building a fire station. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anything else? Yeah. All right. Um, it is 420, and I will make a motion. We are going to close this meeting and go into a non-public. It is going to be 10 minutes. Make a motion to go into a non-public session. Second, yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.